Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan at Primal Chiropractic and Primal Elite Fitness. In this week's video blog, we're gonna hopefully help you understand if you have healthy hips or not. It's a pretty complex topic and we're gonna break it down into a part one and part two series. Part one is gonna be all about range of motion and then part two is gonna be about stability. So we're gonna talk about range of motion first. So there's six planes that we assess. There's flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, and internal and external rotation of the hip. The shoulder and our hip are our ball and socket joints. And whenever there's muscular imbalances going on, we lose what's called centration. And centration is the ability for the ball to be dead center in the socket. So we're able to move with a nice smooth access of movement or rotation. When we have some of these imbalances or synergy is lost, the ball can rock up into the socket. It can rock forward, backward, inside, outside. And we start to lose range of motion, but also the wear and tear and the pain will start to come on. So we're gonna break down our six assessments for the six different ranges of motion. I'm gonna try to fly through this fast because it is a little dry. Uh, but we're gonna start off with hip flexion first. So for hip flexion, we're gonna be looking at two different uh, tests. The first is how much active hip flexion you can get. So laying on your back with the low back flat into the floor, we want to see if the middle of the shin can be in a direct line at the ball and socket joint. If you're stopping short, that's a good sign that you lack active hip flexion. And then the other one is the straight leg raise. So with the knee straight, we want to see if you can get somewhere between 70 and 90 degrees. So if you're getting very tight anywhere below that, that is a sign that your hamstrings are uh, too tight and they're not allowing you to move through that full range of motion. Just the opposite, hip extension. There's a few tests that we do. Uh, one of them is against a wall where you're gonna hold on with the arm straight and we're gonna measure how much hip extension you have without any compensation, especially with overarching of the low back. We're looking at typically anywhere from 10 to 30 degrees. And there's also a passive test that will tell us a lot of information. If you were to lay on your back on an elevated surface again, what you'll do is you'll tuck a leg in and we'll be assessing the down leg. The first thing that we're looking for, and again, the low back has to be flush to the floor, is if your thigh elevates off and it's no longer parallel with the floor, the hip flexors are tight and they're tugging up. And then if you look at the knee joint, we're typically looking at a 90 degree angle. So if you have too much extension of the knee, that's a sign that the quadriceps are shortened and tight, and that's gonna create compensation elsewhere. Okay, moving on. We'll next talk about abduction and adduction. So for abduction, that's moving out to the side, we wanna make sure our belt line stays level and we're not hiking up. And we wanna see how far we can lift that leg up again without the hike. We're looking for about 40 to 45 degrees. And then the opposite motion, adduction, we're going to soften the knee, we're gonna move forward, out to the side, down and back. Can you get anywhere from about four to six inches between feet with both feet flat into the floor without any form of compensation? All right, the last two, internal external rotation. For internal rotation, we're gonna stagger the stance and we're gonna pivot through that back leg. And what we wanna see is no movement whatsoever of the knee joint until we get to at least about 45 degrees of the pelvis. So once you go beyond 45 degrees, you're gonna notice that your knee will start to buckle or move outward and that's okay. But if you're noticing that right away, that's a sign that you lack internal rotation of the hip. And there's passive versions that we do as well. And last but not least, external rotation. A very simple one that you can do is just sit down into a chair without lifting your knee up too high. We wanna see if you can get your heel to about mid shin. So if you have to hike up high to do that, that's compensating and you're lacking external rotation. And then to test the actual capsule, if the hip's able to move in the capsule or not, you can put the foot on top of the knee and actively without using your hands, try to drive that knee down towards the floor and attempt to get parallel with your shin to the floor. 
So these are six simple tests that you can do on your own. And keep in mind, if you're not passing these, this is a sign that you are a potential candidate for low back pain, hip pain. This can even trickle down and create knee dysfunction, foot dysfunction. It can pretty much cause dysfunction from head to toe. So give these a shot. And if you guys need any help or any treatment, give us a call.